Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Lumix Lounge Live. We're here in the Panasonic booth at WPPI 2015. This is the last session of the show and probably going to be one of the most exciting sessions that we're doing. I'm sitting here with two of my friends, Ms. Darlene Hildebrandt and Catherine Hall. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, Frederick. This is going to be fun. So, you know, I was thinking of the title for the session and I just wanted to make it really simple. So my titles are always things that I'm interested in. And female entrepreneurs in photography. You guys are doing that stuff. You're online, you're training, you're crushing it. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this. Darlene, give us a little bit of like background on what you do like day to day, day in the life. Well, according to Robert Evans, when we did TWIP last night, we've been doing this since, you know, the Flintstones age. <laughs> Him and I, we figured that we've been doing it the same number of years. Yeah. So. Um, back in the day, I started with film and uh, shot medium format, did weddings, um, you know, two-year college program, so I'm formal trained, all that stuff. Did portraits of weddings for years, uh, happened to divorce my other half, so uh -oh. that kind of ended the, um, the wedding business. He kept going, yep. and I've dabbled in all kinds. Of, I like reinventing myself, so I've done fine art. I sell my stuff in galleries. I still have a gallery that represents me back home. Cool. And um, now I've moved into teaching, and I really love it. I like to see, it's like, you know, the magic in the dark room when the print appears, yeah. and, and that's kind of gone from digital, because it's like right there. Yeah. And now I get the magic of teaching a student something, and they have this aha moment, and I see that magic in their eyes. So I'm living vicariously through my students. It's epiphany moment, right? Awesome. Catherine Hall, I've known you for... A while, a couple Since of years. the beginning. Since the beginning. Since the Adobe days. Right, really? Was it yeah. Really? Wow. That's where it started. The Jeez. Tasmania trip. So you're one of my oldest friends. Yeah. yeah. The trip you should have been on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's talk. I know this, this is going to go off the rails. This is going off the rails. Um, your background. I mean, you've, you've been shooting. I've seen your work. You're, the, you're published all over the place. You're in magazines every five minutes. Tell us about how you got started in all this. Oh, well, I guess high school, really. Really? It's, yeah, I took a photography course, yeah. and um, it was something that I was naturally good at. And I had, interestingly enough, I had, um, during one of the open houses, my own little private display. Yeah. And I was super proud of it and um, all excited. So I was kind of just standing near it, listening to, like, all the parents come through and the teacher talking. And one of the parents was talking to the teacher, saying, oh, this photographer what's you know what's the story and the teacher's like yeah he's she's really good but she would never make it as a professional yeah. and I heard that uh -huh. and I was 16 yeah and I was like I'll, I'll show him yeah and here, <laughs> it was here kind we of an are seven years moment. later and you like, still remember that yeah 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 no it was, a, it was a moment of like well he can't tell me what I can and can't do right right and so um that's kind of where it started and then yeah. it's first you know so the passion love is just grows every day. Take us take us to the present now. What do you like right now you have Catherine Hall Studios, CatherineHallStudios.com. What else is in your portfolio of things that you're doing? So I would say weddings are definitely the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. um, but it's def it is changing. I'm doing a lot more editorial and commercial work as well, mm -hmm. which is great because it keeps me busy year round. And also I find that all the different genres, as long as it's people, actually all the different genres they all kind of complement each other. So if I'm doing different types of work, then that will improve my wedding photography and the wedding improve different portrait and, and lifestyle. Yeah. So um, I find I like having my hand in different cookie jars and trying different things. It keeps it fresh and interesting. Keeps it fresh, yeah. interesting, continuously challenged and always growing. And, and yeah. one of those cookie jars I know is an app that I have on my phone oh, that well, you developed, you. Yes. right? So tell me about that app. So Top Model Release app was actually born from me originally not getting releases because I was traveling and it was difficult and I didn't think I needed them and then Adobe wanted to do an interview with me and I was so excited it was like my first break but I didn't have releases so they couldn't show any of my images oh. so they couldn't do the interview and at that point it was like oh, how important are releases so that was sort of the birthing behind it. it was just creating an app that made it really easy to get releases store releases save them and we're actually redoing the whole app right now so it's out of the store 
Oh. And it's going to be back in the store March, April. Very it's cool. Completely reno. Done. So you're a software entrepreneur, a photographer, yeah. a creative, and an educator. Yeah. That's that's your really. Well, yeah. Well, Craig Ellis is the genius behind the redo. I know <laughs> Craig Ellis. Yeah. He's actually working with us on the. Oh, he's working on the yeah. App. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So. Okay. So let's let's the gist of this conversation is what you guys do, right? Female entrepreneurs in this ph photographic industry, which I would say used to be male dominated, and I remember like, I don't know, geez, back in the you know like five, ten years ago we hit like a point of inflection or something and it all shifted. Now it's completely yeah. different. I don't know if it's even or at least heavily female dominated. Do you have any thoughts on why we're there, Darlene? Why, why? why is that shift happening? Is it gear because the gear is getting, is different and lighter or is it better? Were you going to say because the gear is getting easier? <laughs> I, did, I said different Smaller and, and lighter. lighter, right? Yeah. See, I did not say easier. Yeah. Because they're making pink cameras now? Is that why? No. <laughs> I mean, when I started, uh, I actually did interviews with photographers, and that was part of our entry process into college, was we had to do a discovery and find out, you know, what is the industry really like, so yeah. that you have your, you go in with your eyes open, right? Yeah. And one of the things I found out is that they carry a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not a very big person, and um, I just vowed that, you know, it's not going to stop me. Like Catherine said, like, if people say, oh, you can't carry 50, 100 pounds of gear. If I gotta make five trips, I'll make five trips, you know? And sometimes I did, or I bring an assistant or two assistants or whatever whatever I need to do the job, yeah. I'll do the job. So I'm I'm kinda with Catherine where it's like if somebody tells you you can't do something, I'm gonna do it in spite of them, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. just to kinda prove to myself, not right. to them, but to yeah, myself. And if it's something I wanna do, I'm gonna do it anyways. So I, I don't know if there's a, the aspect of the gear is lighter and smaller because it certainly is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I was hauling Hasselblads and three or four mono lights wow. and stands and umbrellas and you know, and now you can take a couple of speed lights and a bag and you know, that's this big, mm -hmm. right? So there is a, a size factor. Yeah. But I think like if I relate it to my classes and the people that I see in my classes. I'm seeing a shift to, I would say, 70, 30 females to males in most of my classes and on my on my tours that I do. Right. And I think that there's just an interest in, women have an interest in photography. They're, they're the household, you know, the family, the matriarch. They want to photograph their kids, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, as, a, as a family portrait photographer, the one that comes to hire you is the woman. Yeah. So they're, they're always instigating the photography, they're the buyers, they're the shoppers, mm -hmm. and now they're turning into, okay, I'm going to do this myself. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, so brass tacks, when you're at the wedding, Heather, is it easier, do you think it's easier for you to get the necessary shots than it would be for a male photographer? Going out there because you can go when the bride's getting dressed and yeah. and not make everyone creeped out. You know, I feel like there's advantages from both directions. I think access is definitely better for yeah. a female because I mean, especially if they're comfortable with you, they'll just they won't even think they'll strip right in front of you. Yeah. You know, um, but I do think there is an advantage as a male, you know, seeing a woman in a different the female form and like. I wouldn't say a sexier way, but like this, a guy views a woman differently, and so they have a different perspective. Yeah. So I think there's pluses and minuses on both ends. Um, you know, and I also think a lot of it has to do with personality. So if you trust your photographer, like, you know, I'm sure Jerry's name's dropped a million times, but I'm sure any woman would just, without thinking, wouldn't mind having him in the room while they're getting ready, you know, because he's just that yeah. type of personality. Yeah. So, um, as a male, I think you can overcome that. Yeah. Um, There's pluses and minuses but on yeah, either side, right? Yeah, I think right? both sides. And yeah. like you said, it is easier to get around. I sometimes am jealous of men being taller because yeah. they have a perspective, you know, that is different than someone that's just average height. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I think either sex has advantages and yeah. whatnot. No, absolutely. So we're at WPPI 2015, right? It's an exciting show. Kevin, you said it's big, right? It's yeah. A lot of stuff to see here. A lot of excitement. I had Jason Group on earlier, and I asked him this same question: What was his perspective of, you know, this year's show versus last year's show, and all that? And then I think his the one of the main things he said was: There's a lot of new faces here. Are you guys seeing the same thing, darling? I mean, is it? Is it? You've been here like what eight times, right? I can't, I lost count. I yeah. mean, I've been from different perspectives to the show because I started coming. Um, my first one, I made a mistake yesterday. My first one was 97, oh, 1997, wow. yeah. um, as a first time, you know, and 
I've been in photography at that time already eight years, mm -hmm. but it was the first time coming here to a big show like this, mm -hmm. and it was eye-opening, you know, like entering the competition. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of these things are important, and maybe even now more so in the digital world, because you can sit at home and do your own thing and say, wow, my work is really great. But when you get in that competition room and you see these amazing shots and you put yourself up, not comparing, but you see what's possible and you see what other people are doing yeah. and you get to go, oh, there's so much more, you yeah. know, yeah. or maybe I want to develop my style a bit more or learn a new technique or, yeah. and you can do all of that here. Yeah. And I mean, I'm seeing all the same, you know, kinds of opportunities now that I saw 18 years ago, mm -hmm. but the show is massive. Yeah. And it is huge. I, I don't even know how many attendees are here. Do you have any I don't idea? know. I don't know. Yeah, 10,000? 10,000 yeah. 10, yeah. or a something? Lot. At least yeah. 10, yeah. yeah. A lot. And um, there's so much to see. I think, like, what I did personally is, you know, I picked the trade show people that I wanted to go see and just went there and focused on that. And if you're, you know, a newbie coming to the show, pick the threads that you want to see or I want to learn about lighting, so I'm going to go to everything on lighting. I want to learn about marketing. I want to go everything on marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I love marketing. I mean, Brian yeah, and I yeah. are kind yeah, of yeah. geeks about that stuff. You I know? I'm a geek like about sense. it too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's the key to being a, a business person. You mentioned women in business, and um, I'm kind of going all directions here, yeah, but it's okay. yeah. uh, you know, I think as a women, woman in business, sometimes it's harder because. You know, people think, oh, maybe you're going to be softer or easier. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in my business, when I was doing weddings with my with my ex-partner, I was the tough one. You know, he would give him a deal, and I'm not giving no deal. You were the manager in the back I'm room. I'm not giving any yeah. deals, yeah. 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 Um, but they'd look to me for the deal, and I'm like, not happening. Yeah. You know, we go buy a car, I'm negotiating. Nice. For real. Very good. <laughs> so, Very good. So, Catherine, what about you? What's, uh, what's stuck out at the show, and how does the show feel for you this year versus previous years? Um, I'd definitely say... Definitely a lot of new faces, but I think like that's that every every year. I always kind of have that feeling. Um, the biggest change I've seen has really been in the competition mm -hmm. and how they've raised the bar and they've they really heard the are ahead of amazing. You know the they've changed the program with Jerry, Melissa, and Jason working on changing the program. Um, it's just the entries have gotten a lot better. Um, and the critiques have gotten a lot better, and just the whole process. Yeah. Um, and they're awarding a lot more of the, you know, the medals and the other things, photographers that have. So it's becoming more of like a group versus just like an individual thing. Yep. An ongoing sort of accumulation of points versus like I won this once. Mm -hmm. um, so the community is built that way too. So I'd say you know the, the competition's probably been the biggest change that I've seen. Um, and also, I mean, the same same would be just the networking and right. why do we come here every year? It's the you know? parties. Come it's, on. No. it's so, like you said, it's easy to get stuck and like lost. And yeah. the competition is actually really humbling. You know, yeah. it really is. It's because yeah. you see all these gorgeous friends, and, you're, and it makes you, you want to up about, your game. Yeah, it right. definitely. Yeah. Um, but the first year coming was. 07 and that was because I got the Heishinen scholarship yeah, well. and I can definitely say that like I attribute a huge my success is largely because of the show wow largely because because wow. before I came here I had no I didn't have any can, connections can Jason take that quote and put it on a poster <laughs> for WPPI <laughs> yes you may no but it's really true like before I didn't know anyone I had no connections I didn't know what I was doing and I came here and it was. I met so many people yeah. and I learned so much and it's sort of you know a crash course in a sense and yeah. and for long for many years it was coming here to get inspired you know yeah. like this is my way of getting inspired each year. Love it. If I could ask something like yeah, I mean go there's for it. so much online education. I mean I, I do online education. You do workshops and things yeah. too. Um, there's so much online education that you could just sit home and do your thing at home um, and learn what you need to learn. But I think there's a value in seeing people face to face. Yeah. You know, I mean, like this is the first time we saw each other face to face. Yeah. I've known you for years, right? You know, I feel and like we had and dinner and yeah. all that stuff. And it's great to to meet people because there's a difference. You you take your relationship to a different level when you're face to face as opposed to sitting at home in a chat room or yeah. in a forum or something. And there's value in, in socializing and the social aspect of the networking piece, you right, know, and right. um, the photo walks that have been going on. I think I think that's new. Like that was not going on last time I was here. Right. And I think that's 
that's a great aspect. Yeah, yeah. Jason said they they ran 50 photo walks this year. Wow. 50 wow. photo walks. That's it's crazy. Insane, insane. All right, I want to wrap it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to wrap it up and talk about um, some more process oriented things, like like how you operate your studio, like Heather, on say a monthly basis. You know, and you have this flow of customers coming in to your business, and like, how do you manage that? I mean, it's, you know, it is, you're a celebrity, you're on stage here, you're talking, you're doing the education stuff, you're managing Craig with the app. How do you keep all that stuff together? Uh, do you have a studio manager? Yeah, is definitely it just you? help. I mean, help is huge. Yeah, I'm um, learning the help thing. Yeah, you yeah. really, and just learning how to outsource, because I know we're all control freaks as mm -hmm. artists, and yeah. just letting go of things, yep. um, asking for help, and, uh, and then also not taking on, learning how to say no would be the biggest thing. That's the hardest thing for. That's the hardest thing. It's, it's and it's not so much I, for me. It's not so much learning how to say no that it is being learning not to be distracted by everything because there's so many there's so many opportunities, opportunities yeah. and they all look good, right? Yeah. It's like Hansel and Gretel. Like, like, it's like I want that. No, I want that. And pretty soon you're sick and the witch is eating you. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. So studio manager and you have how big is your staff? Your team. Well, right now, I've kind of moved towards outsourcing a lot through independent contractors. Um, so right now, I just have main, one main studio manager that's mm -hmm. staff. Yeah. And then everyone else is, I have a ton of contractors that I work with. Are they remote? Are they? Yeah, all remote. Oh, okay. So it's just they have like their specialized skill. Like, so I have my raw processor, I have my you know, web designer, my so writer, cool. my, yeah. you know, so, and actually I found that that's um, better for me in the sense of keeping long relationships because yep. they have their skill, they, I pay them when I need them. Versus with staff, it gets a little bit tricky because you're you continuously needing, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, to make sure like that they always have their hours. For them to do as well. yeah, yeah, it's it's challenging having staff. Well, how do you, Darlene? Do you do the same thing? You have that kind of, you know, staff around you. Support well, right system? now it's it's uh, we're a team of two, so myself and my husband. It yeah. works well because he's my he's my tech guy, he's my IT guy, so he keeps everything running yeah. smoothly. Yeah. You know, make sure we're not hacked and all that stuff. Yeah. And um, I take care of the the front stuff and. Um, we do the same. We outsource other things. You know, we need a designer. We hire a designer. We need a, a video crew. We hire a video crew. So mm -hmm. um, we're actually looking at taking on like a virtual assistant for more of a like a regular yeah. basis as yeah. well. Because you're right. There's things that we have to do all the time. Not so much processing in my case, but you know, social media stuff yeah. and yeah. Uh, research and all these other things involved in a website and marketing yeah. that I just don't physically have the time for. Yeah. You, you, you brought up a good topic. I want, oh, Catherine, I want you to, have to take this first. So social media, it's critical these days, right? Yeah. Um, but how do you manage it? Some some photographers, they'll do it all themselves, and they're in there all the time, 9 o'clock, they're on Facebook posting, you know, all this stuff. Um, and some photographers hire people out, like Darlene mentioned, maybe a social media manager to come in and handle that voice for you and either act as a representative of your company or act as you online. How do you tackle it? Um, I kind of go... I. I believe in the middle. So I, I post a lot of personal stuff myself, and you can kind of tell, my personal page is a lot more personal than my business. Um, I don't post anything on my business page. So that's really generated by my staff. It's my images. I mean, I'll help them come up with captions and whatnot. So I'll definitely help with the material generating, but they're actually doing the posting. And then my personal page is a mixture of me posting while I'm out doing things and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then also just having sort of an image archive that my staff can continually post. Just really more than anything, wanting to make sure that there's something being posted regularly, like daily. Yeah, and regularly, is it daily, every other day? Daily. Weekly? Daily, yeah. okay, okay. And Instagram and all that, you're everywhere? Yeah, so, and I mean, you can always, we'll recycle content, you know, so it's not like we're always having to come up with them for all the different pages yeah. and whatnot. So it might be posting this on Facebook at nine, and then posting it on Google Plus at five, and just assuming the audience is going to be fairly different. Yeah. Um, the the trickiest thing I think Instagram and Facebook, the audience overlaps more than any of the other um, networks. So that's the, the hardest one is making sure those are not exactly the same at the same time. Right. 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 But um, it seems to work pretty well, and and daily could even just be you know as simple as like just 
an image that I have that's older. You know, that's yeah. just like I'm putting where I took it. Yeah. Just yeah, giving some I was, some eye I was candy. thinking about this and yeah. some thoughts, random thoughts. For today, yeah. I'll get a picture with you guys. There you go. <laughs> we will have to do a picture before you leave. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie, what about you? How do you handle your social media? Is it, is it outsourced or is it um, Right all now, you? it's a little hodgepodge, so I need, I need a better system because right now we're just kind of all over the place. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I survey my audience and most of them live on Facebook. So like that's a high majority. So that's where I focus most of my efforts, and obviously we found out some things about Google Plus yesterday. Yes, so we did. Yeah. not going to be focusing much effort there. Yeah. Um, yeah. My audience just is not on Twitter. You know, I mean, I, I tweet, I'm on Twitter, but I don't use it a great deal. Yeah. So I, I tend to like, I mean, it's kind of like you know, like I said, learn one thing and learn it really well. Yep. I um, for me, I, social media is like find where your audience is and do that well. So yeah. um, I want to work Facebook a little better than I'm doing now and. Don't we all? Yes. Don't so I all. need I need an assistant. Put out the plea, yeah. assistant. So speaking of that, where do assistants go to contact you? <laughs> where, <laughs> where's your website? Uh, we'll be taking applications. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where's your website at? Where can people go to connect with you? They can find me on digitalphotomentor.com. Okay. I've got lots of free tutorials on there, and we have a couple of online classes, uh, with, which I've done with Bruce, Mr. Bruce Clark. Yeah. Or yeah. Clark A, as we now <laughs> call him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have a couple of photography tours, and we're adding more. We're looking right now. We have. Nicaragua and Cuba, nice. and we're looking at adding Peru and China in the next 18 months. Nice, very cool. Congratulations. So I got to learn Chinese, I guess. You're going to be mixing languages after a while. Spanish and Chinese. There I'm going to go. be messed up. Yeah, yeah. Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Darlene, for coming on. I appreciate it. Catherine, what about you? Where can people go to connect with you? CatherineHallStudios.com, I know. Yeah, CatherineHallStudios.com, yeah. that's the wedding. And then CatherineHall.net is the editorial. Yep. CatherineHall.com is not me. <laughs> Somebody else. And, and she won't sell it to me, so I just really? let that go. No. Why and not? she's a photographer, too. Oh, that's why. Oh. She's, like, she's going to ride it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, it is what it is. Okay, so CatherineHallStudios.com, yeah. and that... That's yeah. your room. All roads lead there. Yeah, right. yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks yeah. for coming on. Thank I you appreciate for it. Us. No, it's a busy show for both of you guys, but we got through it. This is awesome. It's a yeah. perfect session. All right. Well, have a good show. We're Thank gonna wrap you, it up. Thank you, Frederick. That's it for this last session in the Lumix Lounge. My name is Frederick Van Johnson, Darlene Hildebrandt, and Catherine Hall. It's a great session, guys. We'll see you at the next WPPI night.